Advent box is now the around the world box. Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the O de V edition. This is day one of the Costco 2023, used to be Advent box, now it's around the world in 24 wines box. All right, let's get started. Okay, I hope you know what we're going to do. We're going to do 24 little wine lessons in 24 days, in the first 24 days of December. And you're going to need a few things to do that. You're going to need one of these boxes, although you could just watch the videos. I think I'm entertaining. This box is available from Costco. You can probably find it after December 1st if you're just watching this and you don't have one of these. But you're going to need that. If you've got the box, you're going to need a wine glass to drink out of, and possibly a wine bucket. You can use a plastic bucket, anything like that is fine, but you're going to need to serve the wine at the right temperature. I'm going to go over that in a minute. Also, you're going to need a pen, because this is thinking, not drinking. You're going to need a corkscrew, that's slightly obvious, and then you're going to need either this notebook or this tasting card. This notebook contains a bunch of these tasting cards. This is my new wine tasting journal. Uh, you can download this from Amazon, or sorry, you can download this from a link in description. You can buy this from Amazon, $9.99. I make two bucks. This is free for you to use however you want. And, um, you're going to need 24 of those, or you'll need one bound journal. I'm going to use the journal because I think that's cool. Okay, that's what you're going to need. Let's start talking about the box and what's in the box and the first wine. Okay, I haven't looked at the display at Costco. I just buy the box, bring it home, and then I open it completely raw and uh, we drink it together. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Ugh, there we are, there's the lid, and uh, wine number one is here. There should be a perforation. Here it is. And it looks like this is the bottle. And in here we have a Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. Before we taste the wine, let's talk about it just briefly. Temperature in wine is quite important and it's actually important in both reds and whites. Here we've got a nice, very dark bottle of red wine and the conventional theory or myth is that you should serve the wine at room temperature. Unless you live with me in northern Minnesota in the winter, room temperature is going to be much colder than you think it is. So for example, uh, room temperature might be 70 degrees at your house, but in my house, we don't really heat it above 65. 65 is about the most you wanna serve this at. That's a little bit warm. I would even put this down to 60 or even 50, high 50s. Now white wines want it even colder than that. But most people do this wrong too. They leave the white wine in the fridge. The refrigerator is just above freezing. It's like 38 degrees, maybe 40 degrees. That is way too cold because what happens is the wine becomes very closed off and it loses its aromatics. That's the thing that makes wine special and unique. It's aromatics. If you look at this wine tasting chart, I've devoted an entire half of the wheel to just aroma and smell. Taste is all down here. It's almost secondary to the aromas present in wine. So if you cool your whites too much, they won't have good aroma. If you heat up your reds, meaning you don't chill them enough, they will smell like alcohol and they will be very sharp on the nose and they will burn 
burn in the throat. Those are all indications of quality and make temperature, the thing that you can control, very important. So what should you do? Wine, ice bucket. Now it's cold enough here in my house. This bottle feels chilly because I keep it at around 60 degrees and it's winter in northern Minnesota. But if it's not where you live, then take this bottle, put it in water and ice, not just ice, that's another myth in wine. Put it in water and ice and chill it down. Five minutes, it'll be ready, it'll be perfect. And keep your whites out of the fridge. Don't put them in there unless they've been opened and you want to preserve it, but let them warm up. White wines, red wines, five, seven minutes, similar. Now, the reason I say five, seven minutes, well, you're like, wait a minute, one needs to be colder than the other. What, what should I do and how do I make this work? And can I just put it in the fridge for 15 minutes? No, you can't. You can't put it in the freezer. It might blow up if you forget about it. Why do I know that? Because I've been there. 15 minutes in the fridge, not enough to chill the wine. The ice bucket will do that perfectly. And then if you over chill the wine, you can warm it up by cupping the glass. If you don't chill the wine enough, you've got this stem. Yes, you don't have to touch the glass. That's why, and I'm sorry if you own them, stemless wine glasses are missing an important piece of the experience, which is this thermal decoupler keeping your hot hands away from your perfectly chilled wine. And then you can experience the wine as it warms up. Its aromas and flavors will open up and reveal themselves to you. Okay, enough babbling about temperature. Let's get into the wine. Now you should know that the wine box doesn't have any wines that you can go at and purchase themselves. They're essentially bulk wines purchased from an unknown producer, imported into a facility, and I believe that facility is in France, according to the label. And then they are bottled and shipped to somewhere, maybe like Wisconsin, I'm not really sure, but the importer imports them into the US, labels them with label art, uh, gives them a catchy little name, and then puts them in the box and we drink them. So this, lightning strikes again label. Uh, it doesn't give us much information. It just says Cabernet Sauvignon and Chile. Now there are two primary wine producing regions in South America. You have Chile and Argentina. They are divided by the Andes Mountains. Chile makes Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Carmenere, which is probably their best example. Argentina makes Malbec, Torontes, other red blends, but Malbec and Torontes are their two best examples. Chile got a little bit of a head start. Argentina caught on slowly, but Argentina has surpassed Chile in quality, especially because their Malbecs do well at elevation. If you want a big, bold, beautiful wine, the Chilean or sorry, the Argentinian Malbecs are the best. But Chile went with quantity, not quality. And so, not that you can't go to Chile and find excellent Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon in general. Those are not exported. They are brought into the U.S. as cheaper bulk wines and they are sold inexpensively. So we have an inexpensive Chilean bulk wine. Cabernet Sauvignon is one of the seven noble grapes. They are Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Merlot, and Pinot Noir. Those are the reds. On the white side, you have Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Riesling. I've done a video series on all of those. You can see the link here. Okay. Looking at the label, we turn it around, we grab our eyeglasses, and there is some information back here that is useful. 
And I'm going to put this on my tasting card. So I've got the producer, which I'm just calling the Advent Box. The vintage on the back says 2022. My tasting date, it's from Chile. It's Cabernet Sauvignon. My price is the Advent Box, 100 bucks. But of course, that's not this bottle, but you get it. It's blended in, who knows? It's aged in, I don't know. Now, blend in, what does that mean? Well, Cabernet Sauvignon, is very, very rarely, but there are some examples, very rarely by itself in the bottle. Normally, they blend Cabernet Sauvignon with Merlot, that's its bride, if you will, and because Cab is king, so Merlot must be queen. Um, so they blend Cabernet Sauvignon with Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Petite Syrah, a whole bunch of others to bulk it up because while it makes a good and vigorous vine and wine, it needs a little help in its structure. And when wine producers say structure, they're really talking about acidity and tannin and balance in that play in your mouth. Now on the back label here, it says, the unique terroir of Chile has proven exceptional for full body reds like Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, let's break that sentence down. Terroir is a French concept that means everything conspires in the environment to make this wine great. Now, noble grapes, which Cabernet Sauvignon is, are considered noble because they pick up, they can move across the planet, plant into another place and express the flavor of that place better than other grapes. For example, Tempranillo, which is Spanish wine, doesn't do that particularly well. They grow it in Spain, and that's where its best examples come from. They also grow it a little bit in Texas. But again, um, I'm not finding Texan Tempranillo in my liquor store, are you? Okay, so that's what terroir is, and the noble grapes express terroir better than anybody else, and that's why they're noble. Second sentence, like a fusion of old world and new world, this plushy textured structured Cabernet features ample tannins, opulent fruit character that is uniquely Chilean and boldly delicious. Hmm. So let's break that down too. Old world versus new world. Old world wines are food friendly. They're a little bit higher acid and less fruity. New World wines are fruit forward and are more appropriate for cocktails. They might be even a little bit sweet on the palate. So they're, if you order a glass of wine as a cocktail, that's usually New World. Think Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa. This big, beautiful, bold, oaky, tan, uh, uh, cigars and wonderful, rich flavors of tobacco and oak and cedar box. That's new world. Old world is more subtle, maybe a little bit of raspberry, a little bit of cherry, more acidic in the palate, a little more harsh, but then you blend that with fatty foods and those tannins strip those fats off your palate and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this wine is really good with this meal, but it wasn't so good as a cocktail. That's the difference between old world and new world in a nutshell. New world wines are good cocktail wines. Old world wines are fruit wines. So now the copywriter for the back of this label has said, this is a perfect blend of old and new. Hmm. That means it should go good with food and cocktails. Well, we're gonna have to open up and see. Cabernet Sauvignon is incredibly popular. It's popular because I think a lot of people just think, oh, I like a cab. I, I'd like to, I, I really like cab. It's red and I like red wine, blah, blah, blah. Full stop. It's made quite successfully in California. It's made in Bordeaux. It's made in Chile. It's made in a lot of places around the world. So it's popular. The Australians make a great Cabernet Sauvignon. The South Africans make Cabernet Sauvignon. Everybody makes it. The grape itself is a cross between Cabernet Franc, that's where the Cabernet comes from, and Sauvignon Blanc, which is a white wine, and that's where the Sauvignon comes from. Probably done sometimes 
in the Middle Ages, these two red and white wines got together, grapes got together, and made a little baby. And here it is, Cabernet Sauvignon. The price point is all over the map. $1,000 bottles from the best examples from France to $5 bottles from Bulgaria. So what should we expect from Chile? Ooh, I think we're going to be a little bit further down in the Bulgarian side of the spectrum rather than the $1,000 side of the spectrum. This is a young wine. It's only got a year on it. So it's not going to have a lot of those mature flavors. We're probably not going to get a lot of cedar, not a lot of oak. And we should get a lot of fruit then. We should get uh, cherries, uh, maybe some vegetable. One of the character aromas in Cabernet Samuel is green pepper. Some people can smell it, others can't. We're just going to have to see. The first thing you do is you look at the wine. Take a nice look at it. Now, it's sunny in here today. It looks freaking dark. Now, the tasting card or the notebook has a spot for you to hold the wine over the blank square. And then you can look at the example colors and circle or underline one. I'm going to go dark red. Wow, that is dark. The next thing you do is smell it. Swirl it around. This helps aerate the wine. And a wine glass is shaped purposely to have a rounded bowl and a tighter uh, neck so that here at the top, it's capturing those aromas. Now stick your nose in here and give it a good sniff. The question I would normally ask is, what do you smell? But here, I don't actually want you to think about it at all. I want you to go to the tasting card and start working your way around. Now, toward the center of the card is a low aroma. Toward the outside of the card is intense. So, do I get any citrus? Nope. Do I get any berries? Very, very slight. In fact, boy, not much. Slight berries. I'm going to go one up. Orchard fruit? Mm, I'm going to say nope. Tropical fruits? Nope. Flowers? I'll say slight. Vegetables and herbs. Remember I mentioned green pepper. You know, there might be a little bit of sage in there. Yeah, I'll go, here I will go pronounced roasted. This is nuts, this is vanilla, this is toast, this is those sorts of things. Do I get those? Generally you would think you would, but here, no. Earthy, no. False. Now, <laughs> on the tasting card I put like rubber tires or gasoline and Another fault that you should not really notice is alcohol. And there is a little bit of an alcohol burn here, so I will put my dot out because I noticed it. Now, we're going below the line of the card. Now we're going to taste it. When you taste it, roll it around in your mouth and really give it a good taste. Now, again, don't think about it. Just mark what you notice. Is it sweet? No. How's the acidity? It's kind of medium. How's the tannin? That's the grippiness on your mouth. Don't com confuse dryness or lack of sweetness with tannins. Ooh, you know what? That acidity is actually really good. My mouth is watering. I'm going to change my card. I'm going to give it one more point of acidity. And the tannins are pretty nice. They're not real harsh here. I'll give that a noticeable alcohol. Did it burn going down? No. That's fantastic. It shouldn't burn, so that's slight. Even though I smelled it, it shouldn't burn. Now here's my preference. 
Um, I'll give it a noticeable preference. I, I kind of liked it. What's the body? Let's taste it again for body. The body is medium. And the complexity, do I get any additional aromas? Not really. So, slightly complex. And the finish, it's a nice longish finish. Okay, I filled out my dots. Now I'm going to give it a score. Appearance, three points. Looks nice. Bouquet, I'm going to give it a two. It wasn't overly aromatic. Taste, zero to six. Actually, I liked the way it tastes. I'll give it a five. Finish, it's got a nice finish. It's not metallic. It's uh, not overly drying in the mouth. I think it's got a nice finish. I'll give it a two. Impression, overall, the impression of the wine, if I got served this at a restaurant, I'd be like, you know, that's not bad. There's not a lot of fruit punch to it, you know, but not bad. I'll give it a two for impression. And then I'd go do my math. Okay, I'm going to total this up. I'm going to make my shape and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is my final score for our Lightning Strikes Again Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. I totaled it up and I gave it a 14. If you look at the little guide here, 14, 12 to 15, which 14 falls into, is good. Now, my flavor profile shape, I'm going to try to put a picture of that here. If you start filling out these flavor profiles, you'll see how all these different wines start looking different and you'll start to recognize them based on the flavor profile. The last thing I want to do in my book here is go to the back and I am going to find Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm going to mark that I tasted it and it's on page 11. All right, because this little book's got a build your own index. That's all I've got for you today. I'm going to have Sarah come down, give her completely unbiased opinion of this Cabernet Sauvignon. And I will be back tomorrow for another wine. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please join us and subscribe. And until tomorrow, I say a tout and cheers. Hi, welcome to 2023. Okay, Cabernet Sauvignon Chile. Mm -hmm. Dark, fairly dark. Smells kind of fruity. It smells pretty good. Okay, let me try it. Hmm. That has high acid. I kind of like it. It does make my mouth water. Um, a nice fruity aftertaste. I think I'm going to enjoy that one. Cheers.